This screencast is going to look at the HTML behind form elements. So forms have a number of different pieces to them. And we're going to look at uh, some of the most common ones. It doesn't show every single thing you can do with forms, um, but w the ones you're going to use most often. So forms are wrapped by a form element. So we have the form here. And in order for this form to actually be used to have something to do with it, it has an action. And so that action points to a page that will then process the form. All right. In our example that we're going to use, in this case, we're not actually going to go through the part of processing the form. To do it properly, you have to write some PHP code in this example, but you could use other server-side scripting languages like ASP, Ruby on Rails, uh, Python, and other languages uh, that, that are server-side processing languages that could take the form and then do something with it. Okay, so that part aside, this is really just about writing the HTML for forms, and then the next set will be in terms of styling the form. So the basic elements to a form really are the input here. I'm going to start in the middle a little bit, and then work out. The form input is what allows you to enter something in a form. And there's some different types, and I just left this one open here. These aren't actually all of them. Uh, I should could put in a few more radio. We're actually going to be using that here. So there's different types of input. You have text input, submit button, uh, a hidden input, uh, which is used to often to uh, validate and verify forms and, and, and make sure that the person is uh, logged in or just other options. Uh, and radio, which is uh, radio buttons. So each input uh, needs to have for it a label so you can know well, what is that input for. Um, so that's where the label element comes in. So there's sort of a, a pair when you have your, your inputs. So you have label, and you notice here the label has a for attribute to it. And so the for attribute should be the same here as uh, what usually is used both for the name and the ID of the input. And the reason we have both name and ID is so that we have the name here so we know what, what the label is, is for. But also the same thing with ID. That way later on, often whether you're styling it or very often validating uh, this input, validating meaning did they enter the right uh, information into the input, we can use that. So usually what you want to do is you want to have all three of those the same, the for on the label, the name, and the ID. And there are, we're going to see other ways to do these out, actually. And we'll see an example where the label will actually have the input inside of it and, and some things like that. But these are the two basic parts. So that there gives you um, this right here, an input label and then the form, the input uh, form field. So that's the basics. We can also have what's called a text area input uh, here. And that's when you want a large amount of text to add. So the same sort of things apply. You can use the for name and ID with, to give it a label. But then it has a rows and a columns attribute. And the rows and the columns determine how big the area is, one way of determining them. Uh, you can also style this through CSS and set the width and the height that way. So this here is the text area. Uh, and so rows would be how uh, tall it is, and columns how wide it is. Some browsers now give you the ability to, to move this, that's built into the browser. That's not something uh, that I did anything special for. It's just part of the browser here. And you see here, we have a, a couple other form elements, a radio button and a drop down menu. And those are uh, shown here. So this is the radio. It's just another input, except it has a type radio instead of the normal one, which was uh, type text, really, which is the first one. Uh, I just left these here, but the first one should be type text. And again, we have the for name ID. And then for the for the drop down, which is a select, again, we have our label still uh, with the name and ID. Uh, and this time, you have a select element. And inside of that, you have option elements. And the option elements are what you see inside of the drop down. And then finally, uh, we need a button to submit it. And so that's just an, an input. This one doesn't need a label on it. Uh, and it has a one other thing you haven't seen yet, which is a value attribute. And what the value is is what you see there. So if I just change this to something else like that and save it, and then we go back to our 
page and refresh this, you'll see now that the submit uh, is whatever that you put in for the value. Okay, oops, and I clicked on it by accident. So when you click that button, it's going to go to this page and send all the form data along with it. And like I said, we're not dealing with the form data right now. So there's a couple other things you can use to organize um, your form, and that is what's called a field set. So a field set lets you sort of group some forms together. And I'm actually going to um, add one in here. Um, I'm going to move this uh, field set up so we just cover, let's say, this, the first two things. And then we'll add in another field set here just to sort of show that to you. So field set, um, and I'll make this an ID uh, of whatever. Um, other elements. And normally you would have a field set related to whatever content was in there. And then we'll close off that field set here. So what the field set gives you is a box around these elements and, and they're indented slightly. So this was the first one time I had the field set here, this box, and now I put it in another one, and so now I have two field sets, and you see those are block level elements, so it puts it one after the other. And the other thing you can do with the field set is you can give it a legend. And the legend is a title that appears, <coughs> excuse me, in that line, in the top uh, line of the field set border. So let me add that here, field set title two we'll call it and let's go back to the page and refresh that and there we go field set title two so that's the field set and the legend these are optional they're really more for um, visual organizing on the page uh, have nothing to do with the, the content of the form uh, and as well so it's more just for the user to be able to see different uh, sets of information on the page so that's that all this is the, the one that we're working with, and so I just want to have you guys practice adding some things in. So if we go to that page, this is the page you started with, you see that there's already a number of field sets there. We have one for phone, email, uh, like that. Let's, let's see how it looks again. So we have a contact phone uh, and email. These are just sort of ones I just made up just to show a few examples. And we're going to be working mainly with the text and text area inputs uh, today. So let's add in another field set for name. So we'll put in a field set. I'm going to have this ID, oops, equal to contact name. And we'll give it a legend. Uh, I'm putting my, I put my legends up here sometimes just to put it with the field set to remind it it's there, but you don't have to do it this way. Uh, legend. And we say uh, contact name. And now we're going to add in uh, a spot for their first name and last name. So we start with our label. And we're going to say, OK, what's this uh, for? Although we haven't even done the uh, input yet. But we're just going to say first name. Okay, and then first name here. All right, and then what we're doing this in this case is we're going to put the input inside the label, and that just um, is really to help us with our CSS. So if we want to group the label and the input together and and add some mar margin around it and padding, we're going to use that. So we're actually going to do something a little different here. So I'm going to move the label down one and then I'm going to put my input inside of it. You don't have to do this but it's the technique we're going to be using today uh, that we can style when we style things a little bit later. So I have my input. Uh, the type here is going to be text. We just want them to enter some text in and the name then is going to be the same as oops, the, the four we had ab above. right? So first name and then it's going to have an ID as well that's also equal to the same thing first name, like that. Okay, and if we're using XHTML, uh, we would want to close that. So let's, let's take a look at that here now. So there we go. So now we have contact name, and it has first name inside of it. And I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to make it uh, last name. So copy and paste it. I'm going to just change first to 
last in each case. So there we go, and then let's look at that again. All right, so now we have first name and a last name. So that's it for the HTML. It's not really super complicated. Uh, like I said, in this case, uh, unlike the other example I showed you, we are going, we're putting the input inside of the label. That's really the only difference. And then just remember to keep, ah, I have a mistake here. I didn't put an equal sign by my four. Remember to keep your, your four name and ID the same across your label and input as uh, another way. The, the other reason for this, by the way, I forgot to mention, is that for people who can't see the screen readers, then by using the same four here um, with, the, with the input and the, the label, we'll associate the two together. And so when it comes across this, it knows this is one thing. It's called first name. It can read that out to them uh, and not have to read each, each element separately. So it's... Uh, a, helpful for people who uh, are, are seeing impaired. Okay, that's it for this HTML part.